Jim, our next question sent the corny drive through at gmail.com from Steve in Jersey. What are your thoughts on Harvey Whippleman? <laughs> Downtown Bruno, uh, the new uh, uh, alderman in Walls, Mississippi. Did you see that he ran for city alderman and won? Um, from the from a double wide in Walls all the way to the double wide that the <laughs> that the county <laughs> county offices are in in Walls. Um, I like Bruno. I always have. He's a nice guy. He was dedicated to the business. He loved being around the business and the boys. He's, you know, as as a manager, um, he got heat just with that voice and that, you know, it is little scrawny look and the, you know, the uh, the patter that he had. You know, I mean, they tried to play him for mostly for La Harvey Whippleman, like that's Vince's you know, uh, uh, epitome name for a, a nerd or a, you know, something like that, but a pipsqueak, a shrimp, but he had that big mouth and that big voice, but he and Steve Lombardi, the Brooklyn brawler were the two. And I maybe still are, I don't even know what their status is, but the two longest running production assistants in the history of the WWF, uh, Steve Lombardi's no longer there. Is it? Okay. He's been Uh, gone for a few years. Yeah. Is Harvey still there? I'm not sure. And the fact that he just ran for office makes me question if he is. They ain't that much to do in Walls, Mississippi city government. I think he could take a day or two off to go to TV, but, um, infrastructure. But anyway, well, there you go. They're working on infrastructure down there in walls. As soon as they get a structure, they're going to work on the infra part of it. <laughs> anyway, as I tell you the, you know, the town hooker is a virgin in walls. Did, were you aware of that? I was not. No. Yeah, and they it's a small town. The hotel is very small. It's so small. I checked in there one night. I stuck the key in the door and broke the window. Hey, let me ask you a question. Knowing you do like the guy. Yes. But we have a circle of honesty here. How much of the downtown Bruno gimmick was stolen from Dr. Mark Curtis? Well, that is the that was the bone of contention that Brian Hildebrand had with <laughs> See, here's the thing. They both came from the Pittsburgh area. They both were approximately the same size. They both kind of had the same image starting out, you know, with the, the, the raggedy manager, but where, and Brian was mad because Bruno got a spot that he never got where they each got shortchanged somewhat. And it worked against Brian more than it worked against Bruno is Bruno was a much better promo and Brian was a much better worker. And as a manager, the, you know, the promo got the, the spots over, you know, being able to work. Brian was as good a worker as anybody in the ring. Um, Bruno was not, but Brian never got really comfortable with spitting out a fucking promo that, you know, would grab you. And that's what Bruno did. So, you know, if if you could have just combined somehow, if you could have combined Brian Hildebrand's working ability and and his love of the business and all of his personality with Bruno's promo and his love of the business and his personality, and probably because Brian was in great shape too, just small, so it probably would have worked better if if the the manager that could work had had downtown Bruno's body because then it would have been even more heat getting, but. You know, each of them had something the other needed. But, uh, yeah, there was there was quite a bit of give and take there in their early years on the independence. Well, Jim, perhaps someone like downtown Bruno Harvey Whippleman, whatever you want to call him, looks back on his time in WWE and says, hey, I was mistreated. I was abused. They sent me out for Chinese food. They treated me bad. I had to hang out with Lombardi. Ugh. Perhaps someone like that would say, I need to sue. Well, I don't know if they would or not, because for one thing, Bruno and Lombardi were just like brothers. They were just two peas in a pod. They got along Ew. very well. And as, besides that, besides that, they didn't just go out and get Chinese food. I remember one specific time we were in the South Florida area and they went out and got me a big bucket of wings because I was bored as shit. 
And I was telling all the job guys, if I didn't have some wings, I was probably going to flip out and kill somebody. But anyway, as to relates to your segue, no matter what his problem was, or if he gets in trouble as an alderman down there in Walls, Mississippi, and there's some talk of illegal payoffs at the town garbage dump, then he might want to call the one, the only, the consigliere, the man, the myth, the legend. Call Stephen P. the rest yes folks no matter what your problem Stephen p new can come to the rescue it's me it's me it's Stephen p 888-692-8084 newlawoffice.com are the ways to contact the man who can take care of any problem that you might have if you've been abused misused disgraced cheated lied to harmed or fouled in any way by a gre- an egregiously greedy major corporation, we've talked. You can go to the website, and you can see the numerous cases that Stephen P. New has taken and successfully recovered damages for his clients, including the cancer-causing agents in Johnson and Johnson product, the cancer-causing agent in the new phillips cpap machine that's been recalled we're getting tons of emails about those from people all around the world that had no idea they'd been recalled if you're on a phillips cpap machine check and see and then if necessary give steven a call the poison groundwater the people that were abused at the veterans administration hospital no matter what the case if steven can't take it he can tell you where to go he can do that for sure and He also currently holds the record for the most people drawn to a professional wrestling event since Smoky Mountain Wrestling started running the Raleigh County Armory at Beckley, beat all of the Smoky Mountain shows with the all-star wrestling event that he sponsored last week. Congratulations to Gary Damron and Stephen P. New. But if you need to sue or even just know that you need to talk to somebody and get some advice, newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. That's right. But Jim, let's get a few more questions. I know it's right. I've got the number memorized. We've been talking about this for years now. You have it memorized. Memorized. Is it written in front of you as well? No, it's not. It's memorized. Okay. I didn't know. See, I can close my eyes and still 888-692-8084. Now open my eyes again. See, I wasn't looking at anything. Well, once again, the circle of trust applied here, the circle of honesty, if I'm going to believe that your eyes were indeed closed. Would I lie about closing my eyes? What a thing to lie about. Because who would suspect it? Who would suspect that? Who? But what? what's more, what type of low-down individual would lie about having their eyes closed? Especially if they'd been asked by a female to close their eyes so that they could undress. You would be a terrible person to lie about that. I'm going to let you stew in that, that one. Used, that used to happen a lot back in the old days when there was only one locker room. Close your eyes. Okay. And then Tommy Young got dressed and you both walked out. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Well, let's get our next question here. This was said. Hold on here. Wait a minute. Holy shit. 